ICAM encompasses everything from fundamental research that will not immediately go through the marketplace, but it also has more applied projects. How do you develop materials that are useful? And how do you use materials that are useful? The university fundamental work is there to create, in a sense, new knowledge, new materials for a new need. Deepwater development is a very, very important part of BP upstream business. The reservoirs that have not been yet exploited tend to be high pressure, high temperature, and quite often they are also deeper um, water depth. So far we were exploiting reservoirs up to 15 KSI pressure. So within BP we have Project 20K, which is aiming at accessing reservoir with a 20 KSI pressure. This poses a challenge in terms of the mechanical properties of the equipment. We need to have material that can withstand this, uh, this, this environment. There's a limit to how strong the material can be. We have reached this limit and now what we need is to go stronger. And there's just nothing that exists at the moment for this harsher condition. So if we want to be able to access new reservoirs, we will need new materials. One of the most exciting projects is the hydrogen embrittlement. We are after strong materials. Strong materials are particularly sensitive to hydrogen. Hydrogen will enter the steel by one way or another. Corrosion is an electrochemical process on components which are submerged. And if you put a current which reverses that process, then you stop corrosion. Then the hydrogen gets in. And even though the concentration of hydrogen might be one part per million, that has a dramatic effect on the mechanical properties of the steel. So the goal is to design a way of capturing any hydrogen that gets into the steel and stopping it from migrating to regions where it would do harm. We have quantitative mathematical models which allow us to address some of the variables. But these models are not sufficiently sophisticated. So what we do then is we make about 60 grams of material and we assess whether the models are in the right direction. After the computer modeling, we create our first melt composition. What I got here is a mixture of pure element. What Kelvin is doing now is to melt all these elements together and mix it all up. We're going to perform a heat treatment and then we cut it all up. One piece is to go for chemical composition measurement, the other to be measure the hardness. This equipment will separate out the hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen and then we can measure the amount of hydrogen inside the steel. When we first realized one of the alloy work to the specification, I'm very excited, but you know that more work has to be done. Things look good. We have demonstrated we can not only trap the hydrogen, but actually reduce the motion of hydrogen through the steel. It's great when there's a good result. It's terrific, but until we go to the nine ton component, we cannot actually risk saying that this is successful. But the point is, you know, the indicators are all in the right direction. Whole new ways of making materials have evolved. To really make innovative research advances, you need to bring something new, a new technique, a new approach. It's an enabler, so if we haven't got this alloy, we don't have the technology to exploit our share condition reservoir. The ICANN project is uh, focusing on the fundamental science and sometimes it's a bit difficult to, to see from an industrial perspective, the interest of doing fundamental science. All the academics I've worked with have shown really excellent expertise, very brilliant people focusing on developing engineering solutions. In 10 years' time, when this alloy will be available on the market and will enable access to new reservoirs, then we can look back at all the work done in ICANN and think that well, it was worthwhile.